Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Ivanti Patch to publish updates for third-party applications. So, let's get started. Ivanti Patch consists of two main components. One is the update catalog, which contains the detection and deployment logic used to patch non-Microsoft products and legacy Microsoft products. The other component is a plugin to the Configuration Manager console. The plugin is used to select updates from the catalog, publish them to your WSUS servers, and synchronize with Configuration Manager. The plugin does this by adding two new workspaces to the Software Library's Software Updates folder. The Ivanti Patch workspace contains all the updates available in the Ivanti Patch catalog. You will use this area to locate and publish updates. New content is automatically downloaded from the catalog each time that Configuration Manager is launched, or at least once a day if your Configuration Manager session remains open for more than a day. If you select an update in the Ivanti Patch grid, detailed information about that update will be displayed in the bottom pane. This Details pane is not available if you select two or more updates. The Ivanti Patch grid contains a large number of columns that provide information about each update. The purpose of most of the columns is pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any questions, see the online help system. There are a number of different ways to locate updates that you want to publish. One method is to sort the updates by vendor. Or, you can use the search box to locate a specific update. One of the things you might do before publishing an update is to check the supersedence information. From the Is Superseded column, I can see that the selected update has been superseded by another update. An update that has been superseded is not the most current. It may only apply to earlier versions of a product or it may not be as efficient as the update that supersedes it. The supersedence chain for an update is provided in the bottom pane. For example, for the update that is currently selected, I can verify that it has indeed been superseded, and I can see which update has superseded it and which updates it supersedes. Let's go take a closer look at the latest update in this supersedence chain. In this case, the supersedence column is blank, meaning the update is the most current. Like before, we can verify that by looking at the supersedence information in the bottom pane. And sure enough, we can see that the selected update is the latest update and that it indeed supersedes the update we first looked at. Let's try publishing this update. To do this, I simply enable the checkbox and then click Publish. Let's go with the default and publish the update right now. If you want to automatically update WSUS with any metadata revisions that are available for updates that have been previously published, enable this checkbox. Because the metadata is only descriptive in nature and the update binaries themselves are never changed, the recommendation is to allow the update. And if you want Configuration Manager to automatically synchronize itself with the WSUS database as part of this task, enable this checkbox. This will cause an incremental synchronization to be performed. If you do not enable this checkbox, the published update will not be available until your regularly scheduled synchronization process occurs. Be sure to provide the credentials needed to add the publishing task to Microsoft Scheduler. You can use either your existing account or a different account. One reason you might choose a different account is if the password for your personal account expires periodically. You have the option to specify, say, a service account whose password does not expire. This option is particularly important when scheduling a recurring publishing task. When you are finished, click OK. 
This confirmation message tells me that the publication job was successfully submitted. The status column provides real-time updates on the progress of the job. If I wait just a bit, I'll see the status go from scheduled to publishing and finally to published. Next, let me give you a quick introduction to filters. Filters can be used to control what is displayed in the grid. They can also be used when scheduling a recurring task. For this video, I created one custom filter that searches for updates for Adobe Reader and Google. You can view the filter's configuration by clicking the Edit button. I talk much more about the filtering capabilities in Ivanti Patch in a separate video. You can see how selecting this filter affects which updates are being displayed in the grid. In this case, only Adobe and Google updates are being presented. You can automatically publish updates on a recurring basis by creating a scheduled task, and you can specify a filter within that task. For example, This scheduled task is configured to run every Sunday at 12 a.m. I can specify which updates to publish by using a filter. I could use the Adobe or Google filter that we just looked at, but a more common practice is to use the predefined Latest Not Published filter. With this configuration, the program will automatically publish the latest updates on a weekly basis. Like before, I will automatically update WSUS with any metadata revisions, and I will elect to perform a synchronization each time this task is run. I will also provide the credentials needed to add the publishing task to Microsoft Scheduler. Finally, let me demonstrate how you can expire an update using the Published Third-Party Updates workspace. Ivanti Patch enables you to expire third-party updates that have been invalidated by the product vendor or that have been superseded by other updates. Expired software updates cannot be deployed. The updates you set as expired can then be deleted using the WSUS cleanup tool. It is easy to expire one or more updates. You simply select the updates and then click Expire. After confirming the action, a status message will be displayed confirming that the expiration operation has begun. Keep in mind that an alternative to expiring an update is to simply delete it using the Delete button. The update will be automatically expired as part of the deletion process. And that concludes this video. For more information about Ivanti Patch for SCCM or any of our other products, see the other videos available on this channel or visit our product documentation page. Thanks for watching.